Welcome to Camelot, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a staff member or volunteer will be sharing an object for a permanent collection and posing questions for a discussion. Please check back every day at 10 a.m. for a new artwork and new conversation. Hi, my name is Rosa Vilner and I'm a docent at the Cincinnati Art Museum. In celebration of Cincinnati Jewish Bicentennial, I would like to introduce you to the Cincinnati artist, Henry Mosler. Mosler spent two years documenting the Civil War for Harper's Weekly. Abolitionist feelings ran high, and even after the war, during Reconstruction, there was much interest in what had happened and what would happen to the newly freed people. The Quadroon Girl, based on a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, the image of a beautiful, helpless girl who was one quarter African and about to be sold into slavery by her white father. Slavery, the broad lagoon, lay moored with idle sail. He waited for the rising moon and for the evening gale. Under the shore his boat was tied, and all her listless crew was the gray alligator slide into the steel bayou. Waters of orange flowers and spice reached them from time to time, like airs the breath from paradise upon a world of crime. The planter under his roof of thatch smoked thoughtfully and slow. The slaver's thumb was on the latch, and he seemed in haste to go. He said, my ship at anchor rides in yonder broad lagoon. I only wait the evening tides and the rising of the moon. Before them with her face surprised in timid attitude, like one half curious, half amazed, a quadrant maiden stood. Her eyes were large and full of light, her arms and neck were bare, no garment she wore save a kirtle bright and her own long raven hair. And on her lips there played smile as holy, meek, and faint as lights in some cathedral aisle, the features of a saint. The soil is barren, the farm is old, the thoughtful planter said, then looked upon the slaver's gold, and then upon the maid. His heart within him was at strife with such accursed gains, for he knew whose passions gave her life, whose blood ran in her veins. But the voice of nature was too weak. He took the glittering gold. Then pale as death grew the maiden's cheek, her hands as icy cold. The slaver led her from the door. He led her by the hand to be his slave and paramour in a strange and distant land.